Our country, Zambia, is in a deep crisis, facing economic crisis, rising economic crisis, rising inflation rate, volatile exchange rate, the highest cost of living in recent memories, health outbreaks such as cholera, anthrax, typhoid, dysentery, malaria, and syphilis outbreaks that have increased. Sadly, despite these deep crises facing the country, Misaka in the Ichirema's posture, posture is of indifference and his priorities clearly are elsewhere. He is preoccupied to destroy the opposition and his critics. As Patriotic Front, and I believe all Zambians, we are concerned at the impunity, the level of impunity with which corruption is flourishing and the rate of corruption deals under the government of Misaka and HLM. All major decisions of the country in every sector are driven by an evil sense of corruption and driven by a desperate quest by Mr. Ichirema to hold on to power beyond 2026. We have noted that the, country, the, the return of KCM to Vendetta was driven by corruption. We have demanded for government to publish this fraudulent agreement between ZCCM, IH, and Vendetta. At one time, government engaged in lies by stating that the mine was retained on the word of mouth and the gentleman's agreement. But we all know a wicked agreement was signed and we demand for its publication. This government thrives in lies. A few days ago, I'm sure you have seen videos of an interview uh, conducted by in a young lady, Chipo Manawasa, who has also been recruited on the crusade of trading lies, especially with the international media. And we pray that the international media will not continue to exhibit uh, you know, some gullible, gullibleness in analyzing the information that is given to them by these who are in government. She goes on to lie that uh, when they took over government, the GDP of the country was uh, at uh, $18 billion, which is a total lie. I mean, data is there for everybody to see. At the time that Patriotic Front was taking over government, the GDP was somewhere in the range of 12 to $15 billion. At the time that we were leaving office in 2021, we were somewhere above $27 billion um, uh, you know, as uh, our GDP, to which even Dr. Msokotwani confirmed. But uh, uh, alas, they are lying to those who uh, relish the idea to be entertained to lies. And they even want to claim that they have been, uh, you know, posting a growth of 5.7 uh, of GDP. Our demand is that uh, this young lady and the entire government must apologize for the misinformation that they are churning out. And if there was any morality, actually, in this government, that young lady, that girl would have resigned by today because of the misinformation she was trading. As it were, similarly, the deal between ZCCM IH and an, and an investor purporting to be from the United Arab Emirates is shrouded in secrecy. An open tender process to get an equity partner from the shortlisted 
they shortlisted the companies that included one from China or two from China and one from uh, South Africa was abandoned at the last minute in a strange, in very strange circumstances. The CCM IH was made to accept a company with no known mining experience called International Resource Holdings, IRH. This transaction involving the sale of 51% share holding of the CCM IH shares into Mopani Copper Mines required approval from Parliament as stipulated in Article 210, sub Article 2. President Hichirema ignored this process with impunity. What he was what what was done is an offence and abrogation of the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia, which is the supreme law of this land. And Mr. Hichirema is liable to impeachment. <coughs> is liable to impeachment. This man has committed many offences that uh, the only recourse is for him to be impeached. We are also concerned that a huge transaction fees amounting to $15 million paid to the <coughs> advisors, Rothschild Company and Baker Mackenzie. This is a transaction that could have been done by local lawyers and financial firms why we are paying foreigners, especially those that are known to be associated with the president, we can only speculate. Similar deals have been characterized by corruption, whether it is the purchase of fertilizer, we all know from the very beginning of their journey in government, the $50 million deal that was shrouded in corruption, and the subsequent deals. Obviously, the purchase of um, oil, we all know, medicine and equipment, all shrouded in single sourcing or direct bidding. All these processes have been abused and has become the normal way of procurement under Mr. Ichrem. Declaration of uh, a state of disaster and the begging of $900 million by Misaka and Echrema. The declaration of the state of disaster is part of the leadership disaster that, has, that this country is facing. Misaka and Echrema's leadership failures has made him the central figure of the significant failures that the country has suffered from time immemorial, or at least in is, 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 is the, the record cannot be compared to any. He, imagine he exported the entire National Strategic Maze Reserve, the patriotic front left of uh, 1.5 metric tons, you know, that we had left in, um, in the reserves. Due to his appetite, and his colleagues to engage in corrupt practices. Corruption and insufficiencies have plagued, plagued, pledged the farmer into, you know, into, they have pledged them into support, you know, the support the FISIP with fertilizer are arriving rate or not enough maize in the reserves. We should have preserved that maize in preparation for days like, or years like this one. Mr. Ichrem has given away any domestic resource by granting unfair incentives to the mining sector, revenues that should have, you know, gone towards, you know, our treasury and servicing our people, especially in the social sector. Let me talk about the shrinking democratic space. It's almost three years, and the opposition cannot be allowed to hold public rallies. Protests or demonstrations of any form 
or public processions. Now we are even being stopped from going to church. His Excellency, the President of Patriotic Front and the Sixth President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edika Chagwalungu, went to attend church on the Copper Belt just a few days ago. Up to today, the host reverend of that uh, particular church and any place that uh, they suspect the president went to, the police and the intelligence have continued to harass and interrogate both the reverends, the pastors, as well as the lodge owners where it is suspected that he may have either you know, stopped over for a snack or to interact with uh, you know, people. That is unfortunately what the Zambian people and the opposition are being subjected to. The continued arrests and harassment of senior members of the opposition to instill fear and intimidation and silence critical voices is what this government is determined to do. Remember, a few weeks ago, the president went to force himself as a guest at a Komboka traditional ceremony. When they arrived at the airport, Zambians and the opposition were subjected to unwarranted threats and insults. One after the other, Honorable Mulupi, Mualiteta, clearly under the instruction of Misaka and the HLM, took to the podium, instructing the youths of UPND through this Swaniso that begin to sort out those who are criticizing President Aka and the HLM. They were openly proposing violence, especially against patriotic front. We have always said, even when we were in government, that the most violent political party in the Republic of Zambia is the UPND. We may have had uh, a few cadres as a patriotic front that will be walking around the street singing and so on, but they were not as violent as the UPND are and have were. I'm sure you all remember them. At Patricia Formula, you remember all, most of the incidences where you know, violence occurred during either by elections or political processions, they were initiated, perpetuated by the UPND. And they intend to continue using violence as a means of uh, perpetuating their stay in uh, government. The harassment and arrest of persons deemed to be close to the Zambia 6th you know, president, uh, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, to attempt to isolate the former president is one of the schemes that we know these people are perpetuating. The beating and torture of critics, as in the case of, for example, Rizwan Patel, who was tortured by the police, and also Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba, who was equally beaten and tortured by the police. The attacks and threats against the media. Unfortunately, it's not only the opposition political parties that are under threat. The media equally is under threat. President Hitchlem has also concentrated his schemes to erode democratic institutions using threats and tribal appointments. He now controls parliament, he controls the judiciary, and associated institutions. Judges can now be fired at his whims. Parliament is now a joke with freedom of expression, expression heavily curtailed, and the people's house is now nearly Muti's backyard. International organizations have confirmed this and other human rights abuses being perpetrated by Mr. Itlema's government, including the latest report by the Human Rights Watch. We are aware also of the dirty schemes being perpetuated to rig the 2026 elections, using state institutions, 
such as the Zamba Information Technology Authority, ZICTA. We are aware of the abuse of the National Registration Department and also the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, and the Zambia Police. We are aware of the page being done to positions of council secretaries and town clerks by local government commission, service commission chairperson Axon Sejan, a non-UPND cadre and extremist. You remember this is the man who was saying only a Tonga can talk over from Mazoka. Now he has been uh, awarded uh, you know, the chairmanship of the Local Government Service Commission, which has become an abattoir of slaughtering the careers of qualified personnel in the local government, um, uh, you know, among, you know, among officers in the local government. Sejan's counterpart, Chore Bean, at Public Service Commission, has also continued to page the civil service they have packed over 400 qualified persons at Public Service Management Division, PSMD. The appointment of well-known cadres at ECZ in the chairperson, Mwangala Zalomis, McDonald Chipenzi, all non-UPND cadres as commissioners, and the Chief Electoral Officer, Brown Casolo, Casalo, remains a serious concern to us, the Patriotic Front, and we also believe to the Zambian people. The recent tender to print ballots that was abruptly cancelled at ECZ is also of great concern. It is clear that President Hichirema knows that he has already lost the mass popularity and is determined to stay in power using underhand methods and illegal methods. Look at what he attempted to do or what he did in Kabushi and Kwacha. He believes that was a legitimate test and he wants it to be implemented at national level. Look at what he has sponsor, attempted to sponsor in Patriotic Front to try and create factions. The only good thing is that the, Z the Zambian people and the members of Patriotic Front have been resilient to reject those schemes. And it has become very clear that that project has collapsed. The confusion that he wanted to export into Patriotic Front has gone back to community house and has gone back to state house. And they are quarreling by themselves. And for us, we continue to reorganize and mobilize the party and getting ready for 2026. We call upon Zambians to reject these machinations and to help restore democracy in Zambia by waking up. May we all wake up. May we all, as it, the mantra has been said, ukani. It is clear that Zambians have to res resolve to res rescue themselves from this disastrous leadership and gang of criminals and liars. If Mr. Aka Indechilema had any sense of decency, by now he would have resigned. But as it were, uh, since that has eroded him, we have to deal with him and endure his bad leadership for another one year and some months. And we call upon the Zambian people, may we work together in making sure that the resolve you have made and we have made to retire Ms. Aka in the HRM completely, not only from politics, but also to send him back to where I think he deserves to go and competently so to his farm so he can look after animals because looking after animals does not, cannot be compared or equal looking after human beings. With that, thank you very much and may God bless you.